Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Blue version. This is Omega X Pack Thousand, and we're pretty much continuing through the uh, Pokemon Tower, and I just need to make sure I don't have my items full. Or my bag. I just don't, don't want my bag to be completely full of items. Okay, I got space for two more items. That's perfect. Considering that's... I'm pretty much gonna be... grabbing two more items, literally, at the end of this place, so... It's a good thing that I have those two spaces, and yet another mop head wants to fight. So, let's take on this ghastly, and possibly even finally get Tsunami to evolve into his final form. Because he's kind of long overdue for it. Just like that paralysis. Although I was kind of hoping to go without a paralysis here. Oh well, at least he's rid of paralysis. And I still have to train Jackie Chan off screen. Two paralysis is, 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 is. You know what I mean. In a row. Jeez, and followed up by Nate Shade, which will be doing 22 damage, leaving me with 55 remaining. And I'm fully paralyzed. And now confused. So, power fusion. At least that time I didn't hurt myself, but. Ugh, I don't like having to waste so many healing items, so. And not even on a gym battle, let alone that. Let alone a, a major boss battles in the game. This is just a, a random trainer, by the way, that I kept on, that I keep on getting paralyzed to. And I even a level up. Huh? Who? What? When? Where? Why? How? May the departed souls of Pokemon rest in peace. Okay, that definitely warrants a super potion for Tsunami. Uh, not gonna waste a second one, though, just to get... I just went in a circle! <laughs> uh, yeah. I think there might not be any more items here. Ghost, no! Gah! But just to make sure, I really hope there aren't. One more mop head, and then we'll probably be done with this floor and possibly find those last two items. Considering, well, I really do want to finish this place up and make it my way to the, uh, fourth gym. Oh, great. Confused Ray. That has 100% accuracy, by the way. So, no chance in, it, you, in hope. There's no point in trying to hope that it misses, because it never misses. Basically, like, the, uh, confusing version of Swift. Where's the ghost? 724 winning. What do you have to say? I must have been dreaming. Nah, if you were dreaming, then that would have been a nightmare. Being possessed by a ghost, and we haven't encountered one yet. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what? I've got... Really weird timing for that sort of stuff. I was just about to say, oh, we haven't encountered a ghost yet. And then I encounter one just like I did right now. So it's like twice in a row that I said that we didn't haven't been encountered one yet, and then right then and there I encounter one. Oh, we're we're not even halfway done with this place. And these guys are becoming so much like Zubats back in Mount Moon and the Rock Tunnel. Uh, this person is pretty much an infinite healing place. Well, actually not this person, but... It's basically a, an instant healing thing right here. So basically if your Pokemon are ever low on HP and uh-oh, that... There's an item, and I need to collect it. Actually, I think I'll save that for later. Zombies! 
Okay, that was kind of random. Another mop head, though, but hey, at least this time, Tsunami is at full power now. Thanks to that healing from that purified protection zone, but I'm just gonna call it the... the healing point of this place. Which, there's actually, uh... Well, as the series progresses, more and more healing points appear. But I, I think this is the only one in this game that, as far as not being a Pokémon Center goes. But they become more common later on in the series. Just wanted to point that out. I regained my senses. Uh, I'm gonna save that item for the second trip through this place, actually. Er, er. Mainly because I don't want to run out of space on the way up, considering there's one item that you're actually required to get in order to beat this place, or to complete this tower. Well, as far as getting through the place goes, considering... Wow, nice job on that critical. Not so nice as far as 22 damage on Nightshade. That really does take a chunk out of your HP, depending on what your the user's level is. Wow, how far is it to level 36? Woo! I fell to evil spirits despite my training. Okay, let's just see how far along Tsunami is. That looks like probably another battle and a half. Uh, just a quick heal. Did I fight that guy yet? No, I didn't. Good to know. You shall join us. And one more for the road, although there's another one just south east of here. Well, just down a few steps into the right, really. But hey, it's pr that's pretty much the same thing. Ugh. Darn it. Let's hope we don't hit ourselves like an idiot. Thank you for listening to me and not proving me wrong, like you usually do. Of course. Every time, almost every time that I get hit with a move that has the potential for paralysis, I always get paralyzed. At least I snapped out, Tsunami snapped out of that confusion and got critical. What a nightmare! Hey, I was just talking about nightmares on the previous floor. I was possessed. Yes, you were. It's a good thing there's this healing point, and that these wild encounters can't be fought, because then otherwise I'd probably, well, be frustrating myself even further with this place, considering, well, all these random ghosts would definitely be taking their toll on my team. Give. Me. Your. Soul. Hmm. Okay, so... A soul-stealing ghost this time around, huh? With a Haunter. Which, by the way, are the evolved form of Ghastly, and... Jeez, I've been getting real, really lucky with these criticals on Haunters. And they've been getting really lucky as far as paralyzing me goes. And from a non-electric move at that. But hey, at least the paralysis didn't kick in in full. But him using Nightshade repeatedly isn't that good for me. Wow, that, that was pretty much one of the most ineffective paralysis things that I've ever had. I didn't even get fully paralyzed once. Level 36, and you know what this means. Unless you don't know what this means. Gasp! And now, Tsunami has evolved from a war turtle into a Blastoise. I was under possession. And Blastoise is 
a very powerful water type Pokemon and looks very overweight in this game. <laughs> I think it kind of thins out later on in the series though. Either that or he's trying to press himself against a wall. I don't know why. That That's just the impression that he gives off. And he has cannons sticking out of his shell. That's kind of awesome. And now time to check out his Pokedex entry. And <laughs> that's really funny. I got my 36th Pokemon registered in the Pokedex and he evolves at level 36. Blastoise, the shellfish Pokemon. A brutal Pokemon with pressurized water jets on its shell. They are used for high-speed tackles. Really? I didn't know that Blastoise was known for its speed. I was more familiar with it through its offensive power rather than it... Well, actually, its offense and defenses are pretty good. Here, that's one of the items that, that was actually optional, though. Give me blood. So we've got ghosts, vampires, and zombies in this place. <laughs> Although one person thought that I was a zombie, so I guess that that one's a moot point. So let's see just how well Water Gun does against this guy. Okay, it could be better, could be worse though. But hey, at least it's some progress, and wow, that's a huge boost in his HP. We're all the way up to 111. Uh, I think I'll swap out now for... Uh, Bolt. He needs a chance to gain another level and catch up with Tsunami. Even though they pretty much just one level ago, he, they were at equal standing points. But hey, I want to keep my team members as evenly leveled up as possible for as much as I can. And that there can get kind of difficult later on in the game, especially for my next few members of the team. Arrgh. I feel anemic and weak. Uh, just gonna swap up Tsunami for Bolt. It's kind of funny that Bolt, uh, the majority of his moves are normal moves, and yet ghost types are immune to those moves. So if not for Thunderbolt, Bolt himself would be pretty much defenseless against the ghost type Pokemon. But thankfully he has an electric move, so it's a moot point there. And also Thunderbolt gets critical hits very often. I mean, practically every Thunderbolt that I've launched, like that one, has been a critical hit. Which is very convenient, if you ask me. Key! What's going on here? I guess that guy was probably the Key Master. Urgh, and that item over there is the only required item in this place to get to complete this your, the journey through Pokemon Tower, but we won't be able to actually finish it right now, despite being able to grab that item. I know it sounds dumb to be able to not get there, despite having the ability to go up there. Something fell out. Hair didn't fall out, it was an evil spirit. There's something else blocking off the way. Oh, a rare candy. Did I have one of those in my inventory already? And uh, now I don't. Okay, that there solves that mystery. And yet again, another ghost that I can't identify, nor can I catch. And you want? Uh, do I have any Pokeballs? Nope, but I do have Great Ball. You know what, I probably won't be needing this Great Ball, so here's what would happen if you try to catch one of these ghosts. It dodges it! <laughs> this Pokemon can't be caught! 
And it also uses a fall, even though it didn't even break out of the thing. Be gone, intruders! And yet another ghost, and this one, just like all the others, cannot be caught or fought. At least in its current form. It's too scared to move, pretty much the same as always. Only choice is to run. And by doing that, it pushes you away. So, now it's time to get out of here. I've pretty much done all that I needed to, and I can't fight anyone else in this place, because then all the trainers are defeated, and I can't even level up uh, Jackie Chan at all off of a ghost-type Pokemon, because his only move right now are... Oh, wait. I almost thought I was going to battle that guy. Our Comet Punch, which is a normal-type move, which is pretty much completely useless against ghost types. Oh, hold on. Do I have one of this? Nope. And also Agility, which, although it being a Psychic-type move, is a non-damaging move. It mainly just raises your Pokémon's speed by a lot, I think. So, basically, until Jackie Chan g gains three more levels, then he won't be able to fight off ghost types on his own uh, and switch out. But still, Jackie Chan's a powerful Pokemon, a powerful Hitmonchan, whom will be very helpful throughout the game. I'm pretty sure of it. In fact, I need him to grow those three levels right, in a, right away, actually, considering his next move is going to be a very powerful move that'll be useful in the next gym. And it's my only way of having a fire-type move this, at this point in the game, since I don't have a single fire-type Pokémon to speak of. And I won't even be able to get a Fire-type until probably seven gems in. And yes, I do intend on having an actual Fire-type Pokémon, but I also want Jackie Chan to have a Fire move as well, despite him not getting the whole same type of attack bonus on it. It'll still be useful to have him with a Fire move. So let's move Jackie Chan back up to the top of the list. And I think I'll cut through the, uh, this place right here, mainly just so then I can, uh, be able to gain some experience for Jackie Chan. And, uh, hold on, do I, have I caught a Growlithe or, um, Vulpix yet? No, I haven't gotten Vulpix or Growlithe. Can I find Growlithe? Nope, apparently it's... Vulpix season here. Yep, there is Vulpix in this grass. And Vulpix are kinda annoying to catch considering they have the, the attack roar. And speak of the devil. Or the seven-tailed fox. Although it is a fire type, it's not the fire type that I'm planning on using. Considering we're only four gems in, and that's perfect condition. So let's see, great ball. Let's see if we can catch it. First try. Nice. Usually that takes a while to get a, to catch a Volpix, because usually they'd use Roar on you. Unless that's Growlithe. I don't know. They both. I think both can more Roar at very early levels. Vulpix, the fox Pokémon. At the time of birth, it has just one tail. The tail splits from its tip as it grows older. Oh, huh, so... It... So its tails go into a bit of subdivision? I don't know. And yeah, I nicknamed it Firefox, because that's basically what Vulpixes are. <laughs> And that's also what I use for my internet connection. 
And hey, here's a sand shrew. Time to actually gain some experience off of using Comet Punch. Which I don't think I'll be keeping Comet Punch on. Nope, I won't. And I think all of Jackie Chan's moves that he'll be needing for throughout the game will be learned via level up. And all of them are one right after the other, actually. How far is he to leveling up? That's a lot. Not gonna lie. Actually, I think the next route over is probably gonna be a better training grounds for him. So, best to cut ch to the chase and head to Celadon. Because right after Celadon is where the, uh, the next patch of grass is. Did I ever teach Super Sphere Fly? Yes, I did, because I already got Fly. And I guess... Yeah, this, these underground paths are kind of long. <laughs> Despite them being some of a shortcut, it's not all that short of a cut. Do I have a Sandshrew? I don't remember. Yes, I do. I still need to evolve one, but that'll be later on. Just gonna heal up my team. Well, mainly just Jackie Chan, considering, well... Um, hmm. Do I need to switch boxes? Because I'm going to need to switch boxes soon. I just don't know how soon. Let's check. Oh, oh, well, there you go. That box is full, so it's a good thing I decided to switch right now. Because <laughs> each box can only hold 20 Pokemon in it, and when your box is full, it'll give you a message saying, you can't do that now, you gotta switch boxes first before you can catch anything. And, uh, I think I'll... Yeah, I'll just be training here for a bit. So... Where's Victory? Oh, there he is. Say so, yeah. I suppose I could probably just meet you off-screen after I finish... Ugh, not Spiro. I don't think this is good for Jackie Chan, considering I don't want to fight Spiros, because they get super effective on him. Rattataz, I don't mind. Considering, well, they're not flying types and they don't know heck, so they're perfect candidates for Hitmonchan's Comet Punch Barrage, which can potentially go up to five hits, I believe. But, it takes quite a while, actually. So I'm... Yeah, I'm definitely thinking of off-screen this training montage here. Well, not montage, but... Yeah, just this whole training thing. Because it gets to be kind of monotonous with all the training, and... I don't want to bore you guys with random battling. So... I'll see you in just a moment after I've gained three levels. Okay, see ya. Okay, I'm back and I finished leveling up Hitmonchan. He's now level 33 and he learned Fire Punch, which is just what I needed for the fourth gym, which I'll be taking care of mostly in the next video, actually entirely. Because I forgot completely about this building, the Pokemon Mansion. Zelda Mansion Manager Suite. This place is pretty much nothing of use besides that uh, Eevee on the top floor, but it's ma mainly just like a recreational place, I suppose. And this trainer here has three Pokemon here, and I got one trapped behind this desk and wall. Now it can't escape. But that Nidoran over there can block your exit. My dear Pokemon keep me company. Meowth even brings money home. Because Meowths are attracted to shiny objects. Heck, do I have a Meowth? I do not even remember. 
Uh, yes I do. It's sculpture of Diglett. Yeah, the resemblance is uncanny. This Nidoran tends to kind of walk here, and if you try walking down here from there, it won't even be able to budge, and you'll wind up trapping yourself in there, and it's kind of funny. Game Freak Meeting Room. And in this building, here's a PC, which makes for a grand total of three PCs in this city. Uh, let's see, how's my Pokedex rating? Good, you're trying hard. And I'm I already got that! I think. Did I get an item finder? I don't remember. Yes, I did. You know what, while I'm here at this PC, I want to deposit some items. Because I don't want to have my, uh, bag to be overstuffed with stuff that I won't be needing for now. Like that Pokedol, which I won't be needing until after I clear out, after I, uh, freed Saffron City from Team Rocket, which is something that I'm gonna be doing eventually. Probably sometime after I finish my errands here in Celadon. And, uh, age me up, I can put that away. Probably same with this elixir. Actually, I'll hold on to that. I'll put away the fly HM, though. I think that's plenty of stuff to put away. I'm gonna head back upstairs. And here they are. Game Freak's development room. This pretty much started a trend in the games where the developers of the game itself pretty much put themselves into the game as characters, which is really funny. It's a script, better not look at the ending. Oh, what's, what's there at the ending? I don't see, I don't see, is it a, a, an awesome battle against the Elite Four? Who knows? I wrote the story, isn't Erica cute? I like Misty a lot too. Oh, and Sabrina, I like her. And this guy probably designed all the, uh, the female trainers in the game. Let's see. It's the game program. Messing with it could bug out the game. And yet, there's so many bugs in this game to begin with. Me? I'm the programmer. I'm the graphic artist. I drew you! Nice. Someone's playing a game instead of working. Nice one, dude. Really nice. You're goofing off on building the next game. And this guy's kind of important. Is that right? I'm the game designer. Filling up your Pokedex is tough, but don't quit. When you finish, come tell me. That guy is one of the reasons why I want to fill up the Pokedex completely. Well, aside from Mew, that one's gonna be a Pokemon Red version exclusive, and this way's a dead end. I wonder, is there a hidden item here? Let me just check the item finder. Nope, nothing. Just a barricade of weird looking walls, either that or a metal fence. Hard to tell, really. Since both look exactly the same, and uh, I almost thought there was a staircase leading downwards. <laughs> This place is kind of- that building is kind of confusing as far as where you're going goes. But, anyway, now onwards to the Celadon City Pokemon Gym, and I don't think I've shown this building here yet in this LP. This here's a hotel for people and not Pokemon. She was on vacation with her brother and her boyfriend, and Celadon is such a pretty city. Yes it is, I suppose. My sis brought me on this vacation. Why did she bring her brother? <laughs> He's annoyed that she brought her brother with him. With her, not him. <laughs> Pokemon? No, this is a hotel for people. We're full up. Hmm. I wonder if they're ever not full up. And, uh... See this space right here? There's an invisible PC! <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I think this building was originally meant to be a Pokemon Center, but they didn't want- but then they decided to put the Pokemon Center right outside of the, uh, 
outside of the entrance, so that's probably what they wound up doing, and I'm pretty much out of time for this video, so see you guys in the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Blue version. Enjoy!